Hi, welcome to the barn kitchen. Today we're making bagels. It's a two day process. First, you've got to make your sponge and let it set. Then you make your dough and then you let it ferment overnight and finish and bake and boil and bake them the next day. So I've had a customer call and ask for some. She wants some plain and some blueberry. So I'm gonna make them for you. I sell them at the farmer's market every Saturday morning during the season. And I thought I would make a video so you can see the process. So I'm kind of stooping down because I want to show you how this is done. I've got all my ingredients measured out and I'm ready to get started, so let's go. First thing that you want is three grams of instant yeast. So I'm doing two separate batches. I make them a dozen at a time. So I've got my two bowls here. So I'm gonna put the yeast in each one of the bowls. To that, you're gonna add 510 grams of bread flour. With baking breads, you wanna make sure everything is measured out exactly. So then I'm just gonna stir that around and get the yeast incorporated with the flour. You can do that in this one. And then I'm gonna add 567 grams of room temperature water to each one. And this makes my sponge. And we mix. And you wanna stir this just enough to get everything incorporated. It doesn't make a real stiff dough at this point, you just want everything wet. Okay, that one looks good. Wipe this down. And then I'll do the next one. And again, just incorporate all that water to cover the flour and yeast. These are a little bit of work but they are really, really worth it. And what I like to do is I make them up and freeze them, and then you can just pull them out as you want them. My husband and I generally split one for breakfast. And so basically you're gonna end up with it looking something like that. Like I said, just, just enough to incorporate the liquids and the flour together. So then at this point, our sponge is done. We're gonna cover it and let it sit until it gets real frothy and bubbly. And then we'll go on and finish making the dough. It takes about two hours, roughly, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. But that's step one, and we'll be coming back here in a couple hours and continue from this point. Okay, our sponge is ready. It sat for almost three hours. And if you'll notice, it's really kind of, it's frothy looking on top. That's how to tell when it's done. It's not gonna raise up like bread. It just gets foamy looking and frothy. So to that, I am going to add, or, or I should say, I'm gonna add that to my big pan here because we're gonna be putting this on the big mixer. So I'm gonna take this sponge and dump it in here. Try to get it to where you can see it. And it just kind of falls in there because it's just a big blob of yeast and flour, basically, is all it is. And I want to scrape all of that out of there. It's real stringy, too, you'll notice. And that's how, another way that I can tell that it's ready to go. This is just for one batch, which makes a dozen bagels. And then when I get this done, I do the exact same thing with the other pan that I just made. And the reason I do that is this one's gonna be a plain bagel and the other one's gonna be blueberry. It just works out easier for me to keep them in completely separate batches. Okay. So to this then, we've got to add, to make finish our dough, we're gonna add two more grams of dried yeast. Then we're gonna add 20 grams of salt. And keep that away from the yeast as much as possible. 
Then we're gonna add another 482 grams of bread flour. And I just dump it all in there together. In addition to that, I want some honey. And I haven't weighed that out yet. I'm gonna use some Webster Farms honey here and I want 14 grams. So clear that out and I just pour it out of the jar. It seems to work easier for me. Sometimes I get a little bit more than 14, but it's never been a problem. 14 grams of honey. There we go. So just a little bit. And now this is ready to go onto the mixer and I'm gonna mix it for 10 minutes until the gluten has time to develop. timer here for 10 minutes. Oh, I can't. I got a cake in the oven. I'll do it another way. Forgot I had cake in the oven. <laughs> okay, so that one's going and I go ahead then and I can get this other one ready and I'm just going to leave it in the bowl. So again, I've got two more grams of yeast. 20 grams of salt, 482 grams of bread flour, and then I'm gonna add 14 grams of honey. Tear that out. Okay, now this one, I'm also going to add a cup and a half of dried blueberries. And then it's just going to sit here until that gets done and then we'll mix it up. So we will be back and we will start rolling them out. Okay, our dough is done. It's ready to go. One way you can tell it is do your window pane test. It should hold its own weight and stretch without tearing. It's doing beautiful. So now what you're going to do is we're going to cut it into the individual bagel sizes. And I like to do about 130 grams, give or take. So I just partition them off or start cutting them off, getting as close as I can to 130 grams. That makes a nice size bagel. And sometimes I get a little anal about it, but can't help it. And you're going to end up with 12 of them much. You think I've done this long enough I could eyeball it, but I still cut them out. Close. Got just a hair more there. Okay. I'll stop halfway and show you what I do. 130. Okay, so that's half of them right there. Then you're gonna roll them into balls. And what you do is you just put lots and lots of pressure. They should kind of drag against the counter. They're not gonna stick at all. You'll see I'm not using any additional flour, but it's gonna make a nice smooth ball. So you do that with all of them. Really nice dough. It smells really good. If it's sticky, you've had too much water in it or something. So then you cover it with a wet towel. I just take a tea towel and wet it with some cold water. And you're going to cover it and let it set for 20 minutes. I'll go ahead and get the rest of these partitioned out. And you, I've got the blueberry in the mixer behind me going. I got that going before I turned the camera back on. But these, like I said, they need to rest for 20 minutes. Okay, final step for today. I've got them 
they've set for 20 minutes. I've got the blueberries rolled out and they're resting now. So what you do this last phase for, for today is to roll them into your bagels. And how I do it is just like this. Roll it into a long rope, about eight inches or so. Fold it over, give it another quick roll and put it on your baking pan. And this is just a baking pan with parchment paper and I did spray it with some oil. So again, you're gonna roll them out and it goes really fast. Fold them over, kind of push that down to get that seal to stick and then put them on your baking sheet. Some people push their thumbs through the ball and just kind of pull a hole. I prefer to do it like this. And they don't have to be perfect. After all, they are handmade. They're not machine made like you're gonna see the ones you buy in the frozen food grocery store, and these are to die for, let me tell you. I have people tell me that they're the best bagels they've ever ate. Six. I'm not gonna get all 12 on here. In fact, I think I'll stop, spread them out a little bit because they are gonna raise some. So then I'm gonna cover them so they don't dry out and they go into the refrigerator for 24 hours. Here's our next pan that's ready to go. Do the same thing. I'm gonna put six here. And again, don't add any additional flour to this dough. Don't add any flour to your rolling surface. Here are all the blueberry ones done, ready to go to the refrigerator. Good. And into the fridge till we bake them in the morning. So until tomorrow. That's all we got for today. Okay, it's the next morning. We're back in the barn kitchen getting ready to boil and bake the bagels. I've pulled them out of the fridge and let them sit here for a bit to proof up. They've proofed up nice and full. And I have my water on the pan boiling. And to this water, I have added two tablespoons of baking soda. And I'm also checking the temperature of it. I bought me this handy little gun and it is ready to go. So what you do is we're gonna take the bagels off of the sheet and be very careful. You don't wanna deflate them and just drop them in the water and they should float. Now, if they do not float, they are not ready and you need to put them back in the fridge and let them proof longer. So I try to get six in there at a time depending on how big they are. And this is gonna work just right. And now we're going to set our timer for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, flip them over, and then we're going to do another 30 seconds. I've got a pan ready here with my parchment paper on it. I have sprayed it with some um, vegetable oil. Coming up on four seconds. Three, two, one. You're gonna hear a beep, and so now you just simply flip them over. See how they brown? They get that nice caramel color. Stop that, and we're gonna do it again for another 30 seconds.
And I always do the plain ones first, like I mentioned, because I'm using the same water and I don't want to have anything running off into the um, plain bagels, like the blueberries that are coming up it would be really bad. And these are done, at least for this step. So take them out, put them in your pan. See how nice and plump they are? And leave some space between them because they are going to expand some more in the oven. I have my oven set and heating up to 425, and I'm using a conviction oven. So you want to adjust that if you're just using a regular conventional oven. All right, and we're going to put the other six in there. And I'm going to go ahead and boil these and get on to the blueberry, and we will come back. Okay, here are the blueberry, ready to do them. I'm going to put them in. Great, they're floating. I could have put one more in there, but we'll, we'll just keep it even. seconds and that batch is done. Okay, we're going to put both of them now in the oven at the same time. And what I do is I cook them for six minutes, then take them out, rotate the pan, and cook them for an additional six minutes. And that's at 425 in my conviction oven. finished product. Don't they look beautiful? Lovely caramel coloring on them. I've taken them off, putting them on these drying racks, let them dry for a couple, or, or cooling racks, I mean, let them cool for a couple hours, and then I will bag them up and take them to my customer. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more like it, please hit the subscribe button. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, I enjoy doing these. I get a lot of um, self-fulfillment out of sharing it and hope you have too. So have a great day and God bless.